Here is an application of vectors. An airplane is heading on a bearing of 125 degrees at 400 kilometers per hour. A wind is blowing on a bearing of 225 degrees at 200 kilometers per hour. So part A of the question is determine the magnitude of the resultant ground velocity of the plane and part B is determine its angle, right? So, okay. So to do this, first thing is to sketch the situation. Now we know angle of bearing. So as you understand, angle of bearing is the angle from the north, right? So we are measuring the angle from the north. So an airplane is heading on a bearing of 125 at 400 kilometers per hour. That means from north, you take an angle of 125. 125 means this is 90 plus 35, right? So that is 125. So you get this angle, correct? So once you get this angle, then you draw this direction. So that is an airplane is heading on a bearing of 125. So this angle which you have drawn is 125 from here to here, I'm writing 125 degrees, and this is 400 for you, right? So 400, I'm not writing kilometers per hour, we'll take numbers for the time being. Then it says, a wind is blowing on a bearing of 225. So wind is on a bearing of 225 at 200 kilometers per hour. So I will suggest that whenever you are representing the wind, First, you draw your line from the origin, okay? Now, it says 225. You know, this is 180. So, 180 plus 45 will give you 225. So, that is your wind direction, right? So, that is my wind and I'll call this as wind and I'll call that as a plane P, right? Now, this angle from here to here is 225, right? So that is 225. So let me write red 225 degrees for you here. Correct? So we got this wind. Now, <clears throat> because of the wind, the plane actually will not go in this direction, right? It will move. That is the way. So we'll try to make a line parallel to represent this wind here. So we have this. I'm slightly making things bigger so that it is here it is right so that becomes the effect of wind right now because of this the plane actually moves in a direction which will be the final destination of the plane so it actually goes in this direction do you see that so that is the final direction for the plane so it wanted to be here and let me say this is p and I'll call this as R, the resulting point, right? And this was the wind. So that is how you get your initial diagram, right? I'm just trying to show you how to get the diagram, right? Now the second part of this is, we've already got our numbers here. The numbers are 400 for the plane and 200 for the wind. So that is 200. Now we need to find what this angle is. So that is the third part, right? So once we find this angle, or in this case, we can actually find this angle. That is the final answer angle. So this angle, angle between the plane and the wind. Now as you can see, so what I'll do is, I will extend this line for you, and then try to figure out what that angle should be. So that is how you have to calculate. I'm just showing all these steps so that you understand. Giving a solution is so easy. Now, look at it. Plane is at a bearing of 125. Wind is 225. So the angle between green and red line is 100, right? So, so this angle is 100, right? From here, green to red is 100, correct? 100 degrees, right? But a line makes 180 degrees. Therefore, this angle should be 80 degrees. Does it make sense? So what we did was, just at the center, we see 
that the plane is at the bearing of 125, wind in the bearing of 225, difference between 225 and 125 is the angle between these two which is 100. And now at this point that part is 100 so the angle in our triangle will be 180 minus 100. So we get our angle of 80. Do you understand? So this is this is our calculation and from here we solve our question and now the solution is we know two sides of a triangle so we are calling this let's just be O so our triangle here is OPR correct in this triangle we know OP is 400 PR is 200 and the angle in between is 80 so when we know two sides and included angle we can use which law to solve the triangle cosine law right so we will use cosine law here correct now cosine law to find what so we can find the length of the other side this side that is what will help us to get the actual velocity the final or the relative velocity at times we will be calling it right so this is resultant ground velocity of the plane so that is what we are trying to find now right so resultant we will write vr right so we will write vr here and find out this velocity resultant velocity vr right so vr is square root of so a lot of terms get into this square root the two terms which will go here first are related with 400 and 200, the two sides known to us, right? So these are 400 square plus 200 square minus 2 times 400, 200 and the included angle is 80 degrees, cosine law, cos of 80 degrees. This I'm telling you, easy way to remember, I find students even forgetting this. So cosine law includes cos of the angle included, right? And the two sides known to us. Now it's easy. Use the calculator, get the answer, right? So that gives you the magnitude of resultant velocity. So we get square root. And when you do square root, don't forget to put brackets afterwards, right? Square root and then put brackets. And then do 400 square plus 200 square minus 2 times 400 times 200 times cos of 80 the calculator should be in degrees bracket close equal to then you get your magic number the answer which is 414.989 so I'll write 415 here right so I get a velocity of 415 and the units will be kilometers per hour. So that is my answer for velocity. Remember, once you get the answer, you have to check, does it make sense? It should be more than 400 because, you know, this is a longer side, correct? Against 80 degrees, which is definitely a big number, correct? So, it makes sense, right? So that is kind of first thing which you should see when you get an answer because there is a possibility of punching in wrong numbers or doing a mistake uh, in the calculator itself. So we get our answer and now the second part of this question is to find the angle. Now to find the angle, we'll call this angle theta for the time being. Theta is not our answer. At times I've seen students just writing this answer theta and closing. So which is not. You have to give angle with the north in this case, the bearing angle, right? So that will be, answer will be, you have to see, green line is plane was actually going at a bearing of 125 degrees. Add theta to it, that becomes the resultant. So you have to add theta to your answer to give the resultant velocity angle, okay? Now theta you can find using sine law. So you want to find theta? So you write sine on the top. So sine theta is over, side opposite to it is 200 equals to sine of 80 degrees over resultant velocity we calculated 415. 
So uh, sometimes to get accurate answers, we can use the value which we calculated, which was four decimal places. In this particular case, it was very close to 415, but still what I will do is I will use the same value because always you will not get that this was very close, right? So like this like overkill here. But at times if it was like not that close, it will give you errors, right? So we don't want to make those errors. So we, uh, I mean in this case 415 was good enough. But my recommendation is that you should write four decimal places then round and use that four decimal places here to get accurate answers, right? Now, so from here, what is theta equals to? Theta equals to sine inverse of, so we'll multiply by 200, all these things. So you get 200 divided by this number, 414.989. <coughs> Why I'm using this? For accuracy, right? Actually, when I calculated, this was 414.989 which I rounded to 415 okay now times sine of 80 degrees and then you calculate the angle using the calculator so most calculators have second function as sine inverse and then you put brackets 200 divided by 414.989 times sine of 80 degrees and then you get your answer, which is 28.334. So I'll round this to 28 now, right? So it was 28.3, let's say 28.3 degrees. So that is what I get as my angle, theta, right? Now, as I said, how will you write down your answer, right? Answer here should be how much? Let me write here very clearly. So we'll write in a different ink. So we have resultant velocity, which we just calculated. We'll write 400 and so we say we are is equals to 415 kilometers per hour. Don't forget the units, right? And the direction for us is 28.3. You're going to add to 125. So let's do this work. So we have, we'll write plus 125. So let me write this angle. Now from here, if you see, it will be 125 degrees plus 28.3 right so let's do this we'll add 125 to it right and we get 153.3 so we get our angle angle as bearing angle of 153.3 degrees so that completes the question right so that is how you have to answer these questions I hope you understand and appreciate the method. Thanks and all the best.